Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. So today, we're going to go on sort of from where I left off on another video, Band for a Wrong Think, for which there's a link to below. And I'm going to talk about how we can fight the technocracy that is now overtaking us and give you some examples of how we can do this by moving off their platforms. So what is a technocracy? Well, I mentioned in my video, Banned for Wrong Think, again, link below. We no longer live in a free society. We live in a technocrats, that technocracy rather. That is a society which is ruled by those who own the technology on which we have become dependent to function in everyday life. These are large technology companies such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and Twitter. They have become the technocrats, and they are nothing less than the would-be slaveholders of the 21st century. They will rule us first by banning us from their platforms, and then by starving us by cutting off our bank accounts and credit cards, which they're already doing. I assume it's only a matter of time before PayPal cuts me off for failing to tow the technocratic line. Now, I'm a libertarian. I do not believe that government should intervene. A private business should have the right to refuse service to anyone for any reason, whether it's because they don't like what you have to say, or if you're asked to bake a cake for a gay couple's wedding. And I have to tell you, these two things go in hand in hand. If you want to have the right to not bake a cake, then you must allow these people the right to refuse service to you based on your political opinions. The, you cannot separate these things. Once you have one, you're going to have the other. We've already got the other in the form of the cake. You need to stop it with this. You cannot, there are unintended consequences. You cannot do the one without ultimately down the road paying the price with your own business. Once government decides who businesses can do business with, there's no end to what they can do with it. So I believe that, the, that ultimately the free market is going to respond by creating competitors to the technocrats, which will eventually garner enough users to become viable alternatives. So the point of today's episode is going to be providing alternatives to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Google, the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store, Gmail, web browsers, Wikipedia, Google, when you're using it for web searching, Patreon, your smartphone's operating system, and even your bank account. And I will provide my own opinion of those alternatives. Uh, have you know, I was in IT for 40 years, and um, I know quite a lot about this stuff. I have been doing this since almost since there was an internet to set up. That's what I spent most of my career doing, configuring people's internet stuff. So some alternatives. Well, first we get our Facebook alternatives. Now, Facebook has a number of possible alternatives, although none of them are as popular nor have as many users as Facebook. But if you adopt them, they soon will, and that's the whole point of the video. If you build it, they will come. The first one is MeWe. Now, I, uh, this is a very good alternative to Facebook. It takes a little bit of getting used to because of how it works. It's a little bit different. But you'll find groups there. If you don't find a group that uh, matches your interests, you can create other groups. There's no reason you can't. It's very easy. There is also a chat feature that's kind of interesting that allows you not just user-to-user -user chat, but also chat for the entire group. So if you create a group, then you're going to have you know, a chat function for the entire group. And I have a large presence there on MeWe, uh, as it seems to me, anyway, ultimately the most likely to displace Facebook. Now, MeWe does ban users, but the only ones I've ever seen banned were spam, cam girls who were spamming, stuff like that. And they banned by virtue of you reporting them as being that kind of spam or, you know, being in some way very dangerous or something. Then there's Gab. This platform has taken a lot of heat lately as being a haven for the alt-right and other people with unusual or dissenting views. And frankly, when the press tells you that a social media site is bad, you can usually tell that as a good sign because the press has a leftist bent and will always demonize anything that doesn't conform to communist or socialist philosophies. And Gab also has a very interesting sort of subsidiary deal that it started doing called a dissenter, which you can use either through the website or via a browser add-on that will allow you unmoderated comments of any kind on any way and on like otherwise uncommentable content all over the internet. 
The browser add-in will add links on YouTube, Twitter, and news stories with no comments sections or where the comments require logins to uh, comment on the site or the articles or where comments are moderated. Thus, we're going to get rid of anybody who is too terribly uh, you know, critical of something. Then there's Mind. This is also a good alternative to Facebook. Tim Poole, who is one of YouTube's most successful users, has a large presence on Mind. Now, I also have a presence there, though without a large as footprint as MeWe. I largely use it to push my show. Then there's Diaspora. It is, a, it is decentralized, meaning that there is no one single server that has all Diaspora users and its information on it. It is decentralized in a protocol pods that are run by private individuals and the pods are constantly communicating with each other so that it has the appearance as if it were one central site. Now systems administrators of any given pod can ban, but only banning an entire pod, meaning if they want to get rid of one user, they'll also be cutting off potentially hundreds or thousands of other users that are sharing that pod, which means that they ban very infrequently. Now, I do have a presence on Diaspora, though it's very recent, and uh, I will you know, probably be getting into it bigger. Then there's Twitter alternatives. Well, I'm not a big fan of Twitter in the first place. I use it just for marketing. 128 characters isn't enough to form a coherent thought. It simply encourages uncivility and stupidity, though it's clear that you can become president of the United States almost exclusively by using Twitter and dumbing down issues to the bare minimum. I used to think that Mastodon was a good replacement until a couple of months ago where complaints from other users about the content of my videos got me banned from that platform. Not even Twitter has done that to me. Well, yet. So I can only really suggest Gab, which I spoke about before, and it is not quite a one-to-one -one replacement for Twitter, but as Mastodon has proven itself anti-free speech, there is really no one-to-one -one replacement. Yet, there will be. And then there's Instagram. Well, I can't find one on this. You're screwed. Just quit the platform. It's owned by Facebook and subject to Facebook's anti-free speech rules. If you're looking for an alternative to Reddit. Now, I have never really been a huge fan of Reddit, though I know some Redditors have been responsible for uncoming, uncovering information about bad guys even before law enforcement has done so. So I just haven't used it much. I don't think there's anything bad about it. I just never used it. Although my understanding is that it is becoming pretty anti-free speech at this point. So I would suggest vote as a uh, replacement. And this is what Reddit kind of used to be with its user interface very, very similar to older Reddit designs. And I have a presence there, but it's not really big. Nor can I really comment on how good it is, but that's simply because, you know, I've never used Reddit that much and I'm not really familiar with vote in general. There are good, some good alternatives to YouTube. First is BitChute. And the interesting thing about BitChute is that it utilize, utilizes BitTorrent technology to create a peer-to-peer -peer network of some kind. And to be honest, I don't quite understand what's going on on the hood. I haven't examined it that much. I have a, pres I have a presence there, and my videos are all there. Um, to be honest, it's just because it will auto-copy any video I upload straight over to the site. And to be honest, I often get more views on BitChute than I do on YouTube. I am not thrilled with the apparent video res resolution limits, though I am working to see what I can do to get around that. Another good uh, alternative is BitTube. It is, um, it's, if you, I'm, I'm not as familiar with this. I do have a presence there, and while it's supposed to be able to auto-copy videos from YouTube, I'm not having a lot of success like from that, and my presence is very sparse there at the moment. I'll probably start uploading things there as I go along from now on. Finally, we have the Internet Archive. While it's not a streaming service per se, it does stream, and it allows uploaded videos, and the best part is that it's unlikely to ever delete them. The Internet Archive has a stellar reputation of keeping all content and never kowtowing to some government's demands to remove it. Now, I do have a presence there, though it's very old. And one of my long-term projects is to put everything I've ever recorded, some 300 plus videos, on the Internet Archive since it appears to be the safest way to ensure that my content is never deleted. There's also a lot of general content there, and I particularly like the library of old films, old-time radios, and abandoned software from any platforms and operating system. In fact, my own presence includes a Star Trek game that's total abandonware. 
Now, if you're looking for an alternative to the Google Play Store, there are a few free alternatives to it. Probably the one of which is the best is F-Droid. Now, F-Droid does have limitations. It only has free software, so it doesn't have as many applications available as uh, the Google Play Store. Although, you know, to be honest, uh, most of the apps that I use on a daily basis are there. Um, so it's a good replacement, but it, there's really no free replacement that can actually replace the Google Play Store. But F-Droid comes as close as any of them can. If you're looking for a replacement for the Apple App Store, well, you're screwed. Apple controls its platforms tightly. It does not even allow its users to use alternatives. I don't think any exist. And if you're an Apple user, you're just plain screwed. Now, if you're looking for a Gmail alternative, well, remember this. Google reads all of your mail. Period. They read all your mail. They claim this is to customize your experience, but really they're doing it just to customize the ads that they present to you all throughout their platforms, not just Gmail, but everywhere, all their services, including your phone. There is absolutely nothing secure about Gmail. They can and do turn your information over to law enforcement without even telling you. While that may not sound like a big deal, you might say to yourself, well, I'm not a criminal, who cares? Well, Think about all the emails you've sent. Are you really comfortable with Google reading all of them and maybe hand, hang, handing them over to law enforcement without even a warrant, just a request? You really comfortable with that? So my alternative, and I really, really love this one. I heartily, heartily, heartily recommend it. Hands down, absolutely recommend it. Proton Mail. It has a very strict and deep level of encryption built in. Not even the systems administrators of that site can read your email. Even if you send email to non-ProtonMail users, it still can be secure. Now, I do have an email address there, and as soon as my financial situation is such that I can afford it, I will be moving the entirety of my wrstone.com domain over there to ProtonMail for email. Now, again, I say this as someone who was in IT for 40 years with one of my specialties being IT security. Proton Mail is the only online system that I can fully and 100% endorse. Get Proton Mail, dump your Gmail. In terms of web browsers, all the major web browsers, Microsoft Edge, Internet Exploder, Safari, Chrome, even Mozilla Firefox to some degree, have issues with security. The ones run by the technocrats, Microsoft, Apple, Google, those are just horrifying. They grab all of your browsing data, and I mean all of it, and use it supposedly for advertising, but it's also used along with their other tools to build a profile of who you are. You, they know your name, address, where you work, your age and other vital statistics, and what your interests are, and they build a picture of you. However, brave. I cannot say good enough things about the Brave browser. It is the only one that has built-in levels of security, and that includes security that will block some of the worst things that happen on your web browser and as also try to block as many ads. It is available, Brave is, for Windows, OS X, Linux, Android. I really like that Android version. I have been using it as my default web browser on my uh, handheld since it, it became available. Its ability to auto-filter almost all ads is really awesome. I don't know if there's an iOS version, as I'm not an Apple user. I didn't check it. Brave will mirror some items, such as bookmarks, across your browsers. So if you use the desktop version, you'll have access to the same bookmarks on the smartphone version and vice versa. So that's very cool. Brave is based on Chromium, which is also the browser that Google uses for its Google Chrome base. Chromium is kind of this shared code base that's developing all the features for these browsers. And then Google grabs it and adds on all the spying. But Brave does not do that. It has none of Google's, Google Chrome's spying and, in fact, installs some anti, you know, some security features right out of the box. You can also install add-ins for this from the Google Play Store, and I do. I would recommend specifically some of these. uBlock Origin, because while Brave has a uh, built-in ad blocker, uBlock Origin is still better. Um, it does things, for example, uh, it'll um, block all the ads in video, YouTube videos. Uh, you can find that on the Google Play Store. 
I also include the dissenter add-on because it then allows my you know, Gab's dissenter platform to be accessible right from your browser. It adds buttons to make it easy to comment on things on various sites. And Descender cannot be found in the Google Play Store because Google banned it because it didn't like how Descender lets you discuss things either behind the backs of content creators or by passing them completely, saying anything and everything that you might want to say unfettered, which is the entire point of Descender. And you can't find it on the Play Store, but you can find it on their website. I have a link to it with instructions on how to install it to your specific browser. Now, I also use another cute little app called Magic Apps Actions for YouTube. This adds a number of features to YouTube, but for me, the biggest one, frankly, is just real simple. The ability to control the volume of any given uh, video simply by scrolling on my uh, mouse's uh, wheel, mouse wheel. Uh, I also use Social Fixer for YouTube, another one with a lot of features, uh, most of which I don't use. The main one I use is the one that allows you to resort any posts chronologically. So you don't have to keep hitting that stupid button to change it from you know, top to most recent, and it never saves the state. So um, for Social Fixer for, for Facebook will just automatically do that for you. I also use Feedly Notifier, and this one may apply to you only if you use Feedly as an RSS aggregator, as I do. I don't subscribe to any newspaper, nor, nor do I watch TV news, because, as I say all the time, it's practically a secondary motto of the show, nothing that you see in the press is real. Nothing. So I use RSS feed to customize my news based on what sites appear to be more accurate to me, as much as possible, given that nothing is real or that stuff, stuff that happens to match my interests. So Feedly has an Android app that I generally use basically as my own little customized newspaper that changes from minute to minute. Feedly Notifier just puts in a icon that you can use for a drop-down window in your browser so you can see your RSS items right from there. It's just a cute little add-on. And you can add any other add-on that you can find in the Google Play Store. It can be added to Brave. Again, I cannot praise Brave enough. Get it right now. There are also alternatives to things like Wikipedia. Well, you might think that being rid of Wikipedia is kind of redundant, maybe even silly. But the fact is the site does have a leftist bent. I find it, Wikipedia really, really good for objective types of subject, subjects. If you want to know about something scientific or IT, I think it's really awesome. Uh, and generally is my go-to site if I don't know something like that. However, when you get to things like subjective interpretations of individuals' historical events, you'll find that it does have a clear leftist bias. So if you want something that is a replacement, try Info Galactic. It doesn't appear to go leftist, but it, it attempts to remain neutral. I have very little experience with it, so if I'm wrong, well, hey, don't blame me. Um, your mileage always may vary. Then we get into alternatives for searching itself. The fact is that if you use Google as a search engine, the company is tracking every last thing you do on the web. Everything. Just as with the Chrome browser, it just tracks and tracks and tracks. Nothing that you do on the web is unknown to Google just by using that search engine. So as a replacement, I suggest DuckDuckGo.com, and it's a really good replacement now. It's really starting to come into its own. Uh, a year and a half ago, I may not have recommended it as a default search engine. It didn't quite get the job done. But I've been using it now for a better part of a year as my default search engine everywhere in my browsers, whether it's uh, in my handheld or in my web browser. Uh, and it has really improved a lot. It just keeps improving. And, you know, it's getting really, really good. There are occasions, particularly if I'm looking for a particular image or something, like you might use on my green screen or something, that I might have to resort to a Google image search. But this is becoming less and less as time goes on. DuckDuckGo tracks nothing. All you're doing is searching the Internet, and that's all. And you can easily configure DuckDuckGo to be your browser's search engine, default search engine, for both your handheld and your uh, web browser and the desktop. And there are instructions for this on uh, DuckDuckGo's website. Now, Patreon. Oh, Patreon. Patreon has shown beyond a shadow of a doubt that it has a clear leftist bent. 
They have banned individuals who have never violated Patreon's rules simply for having a political opinion with which Patreon disagrees. Now, there has been a mass migration of both content creators and their patrons right off of this site. About which you can re if you want to watch YouTube videos, search for Patreon and you know migration or leave. You'll find all kinds of YouTube videos if you really want to find out the full story. The replacement here is a Subscribestar. Now I dumped Patreon for Subscribestar months ago. Subscribestar simply doesn't care what your opinions are. It just hooks up content creators with donors, and that's all. In terms of your phone operating system, I said I'd talk about replacements for this. Well, largely you're screwed. If you use iOS, there is simply no replacement. And so Apple knows who you are, all um, your vital statistics, where you live, where you work, and exactly where you are 24-7, 365 via the GPS in your phone. Apple and its uh, partners pull as much data from your phone as possible to find out more about you. Theoretically, this is for advertising, but what they are really doing is building a portrait of who you are, what things you like, what things you dislike, etc. And there's no way to escape Apple if you have iOS until something else comes along, which is unlikely, uh, given the fact that Apple's tight control on its phones uh, makes it almost impossible. You are simply spied upon 24-7, 365, and there's nothing you can do. You're screwed. For Android users, well, for most users, there is no viable replacement for Android. For geek heads like myself, there are some ways to yank out the worst parts of the Google spy machine, but this is something that's not for the faint of heart, as it has the potential to totally brick your phone. Consequently, Google knows who you are, all your vital statistics, where you live, where you work, and exactly where you are 24-7, 365 via the GPS in your phone. And Google and its partners will pull as much data from your phone as possible. And there is no way to escape Google if you have Android. However, because Google doesn't control the hardware, it is certainly possible that someone someday, if there's enough market drive for it, might come up with a non-Android operating system that works on your phone and will be something that the average person can install. There have been several attempts to do this already, but none that have been really successful. It's not just there yet. So that means... You are spied upon 24-7, 365. There's nothing you can do. You are screwed. Now, in terms of financial alternatives, this is becoming a really serious issue. Banks are now beginning to deny service if you have opinions that don't tow the technocratic line and that are not leftist. PayPal, in particular, is banning people based solely on their politics. My own assumption is that my days with the PayPal tip jar are probably numbered, and should I, they'll probably cut me off should I become particularly successful on YouTube. It is, at this point, still my preferred way of donating to me, but that could change. And your options are very limited when they kill your bank account, revoke access to your debit or credit card, or kick you off their banks and platforms. So you really only have, with this, two options. One of these is non-pneumastic precious metals. What I mean by non-pneumastic is they have no value other than what is the gold, silver, etc. that is printed on them. They're not any collector's type of thing. There are lots and lots of company, countries out there, companies out there that just stamp these things out. Those are good. Non-pneumastic precious metals. And then there's cash, such as the U.S. Federal Reserve note. And this is really your only option for making daily transactions. But if you have thousands of dollars in a bank and then they kick you out, stuffing them on their mattress, that's kind of a pain in the ass and not that much fun. But if they kick you out, what else can you do? Some people might say that cryptocurrency is a good replacement. No, no. At this time, it is absolutely a terrible replacement. In the first place, to date, it has only been an investment instrument and its value at any given moment is wildly unpredictable. Very few places accept it as payment for a number of reasons because basically it's impossible to price a good or service in a currency whose value fluctuates so wildly. I mean, a grocery store can't use it. They would be constantly repricing everything on every shelf as the value goes up and down in a totally unpredictable way. They'd have to price at least every hour. Similarly, your rent. How can a landlord 
you know, price it when the value in Bit, Bitcoin or some cryptocurrency is going to vary wildly from day to day and month to month. And you couldn't get a mortgage with it because a mortgage is a long-term loan that depends on a relatively stable value over the long term. Can't do that with cryptocurrency. And in any case, to use it, you have to convert it to your local currency for a fee. And that, that usually involves moving the money into a bank, which is a problem if your bank has cut you off due to your political opinions. So again, when they kick you off of your financial places, non-numastic coins and cash are really your only options. So, mostly in conclusion, I just want you to remember, because people say, oh, this will never work. People won't leave these sites. Well, I want you to remember something. When I was young and when I first got into IT, IBM was considered an absolutely unassailable technocrat. Everybody thought it would be the sole game in town forever. Well, Microsoft came along and totally destroyed IBM's position. Then Microsoft itself was considered an unassailable technocrat. And its position was destroyed by Google. Now Google and these other companies are considered unassailable technocrats. The way that their positions will be destroyed is by users leaving their platforms. And if you want proof of this, just look at Google Plus that was run by Google. It was supposed to be a competitor to Facebook and died an ignoble death due to lack of user adoption. So if we are to free ourselves of the technocrats, the would-be slaveholders of the 21st century, we should not petition government to force private companies to do business with anyone they dislike. We should instead deprive technocrats, the would-be slaveholders of the 21st century, of their income by leaving their platforms. And that's all I really have to say about that for today. So thanks for watching. Feel free to leave your own comments, particularly if you have some alternatives here that I've not mentioned that I didn't know about. Put them in a comment so others can check them out. And if you like what I'm doing, Please do like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. And I'd appreciate your support, either my PayPal or a subscribe star, or my place on my website where you can support me further. Links to all of those in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.